Hello, I am Ji Eun Lee. Today, let's compare two interesting cases that can occur in 12 year old boys. We'll discuss their differences and similarities. First, let's look at the right case. In the plane radiograph, this patient shows a minimally displaced or non displaced fracture. The MRI also reveals that the fracture of the distal tibial tubercle is separated from the adjacent tibia. As a result, there is edema at the fracture site and in the surrounding soft tissues, as well as in Hoffa's fat pad. On the other hand, in the left case, although not clearly visible on plane radiographs, the MRI shows incomplete transverse clefts in the secondary ossification center of the tuberosity. There is also mild marrow edema at the proximal tibia and a secondary ossification center. While these two patients may look similar, the left case is actually cartilaginous stage Osgood-Schlatter disease. The case on the right is a tibial tuberosity fracture. According to the Ogden classification system, it corresponds to type 1A. These two cases can share some common features, such as marrow edema at the proximal tibia, changes in the secondary ossification center, and Hoffa's fat pad edema. However, there are also characteristic findings specific to each condition. In the case of tibial tubercle fracture, a fracture line is present through the tubercle ossification center between the proximal tibia and tuberosity. In osgood schlatter disease, transverse clefts are observed in the secondary ossification center of the tuberosity. osgood schlatter disease is a chronic avulsion injury at the patellar tendon insertion on the tibial tuberosity, typically resulting from repetitive overuse. This leads to thickening and mild signal intensity alteration of the patellar tendon near its insertion. However, in tibial tuberosity fractures, changes in the patellar tendon are not as pronounced. Thank you for watching. If you found my video helpful, please remember to like it.